Hello and welcome to the World News on VOP TV. I'm Esther Mwachuku. We begin the world news with latest reports from Sudan where fighting intensified in Darfur despite a three-day ceasefire between the country's top generals. Dozens have been killed. The ceasefire had eased fighting in the country's capital, creating a window that allowed foreign governments to evacuate thousands of their nationals. Tens of thousands of Sudanese traveled to their country's land borders with Egypt, Chad and Ethiopia and to a port city in the country's Red Sea. The new clashes targeted civilians in the, in the capital city of Janina, an area that is regularly roiled by outbounds of brutal tribal violence. They described attacks by fighters mostly wearing the uniforms of the country's powerful paramilitary. On several neighborhoods across the city early Thursday, forcing many families to leave their homes. Much attention has been centered on the capital's intense fighting, including airstrikes and artillery and drone strikes. Since the country's military and its powerful paramilitary known as the Rapid Support Forces started battling for key government institutions and military bases on April 15. The fighting in the capital has created dire conditions for many struggling to obtain food and water. Electricity is cut off across much of the capital and other cities. Multiple aid agencies have had to suspend operations. A third of Sudan's population of 4 to 6 million, which relies on humanitarian assistance, could therefore be stranded. Seven persons have been confirmed killed after a car on a moving passenger train caught fire overnight in southern Pakistan on Thursday. A railway official said the train caught fire in Kapoor, a district about 300 miles north of Karachi. He said six people were killed in the blaze while a woman died when she jumped from the window of the moving train. He also noted that the blaze badly damaged several other cars on the train and the cause remained unclear. Picture footage shows several burned sections of the train which was on its way from Karachi to the eastern city of Lahore. When a car caught fire, local media reported that the flames roared through the train Wednesday night, engulfing several cars. In 2019, at least 74 passengers were killed and dozens injured in a train fire which triggered when a cooking gas stove exploded in the eastern Punjab province. Now, the EUS and South Korea have reached a landmark deal to counter North Korea's rising nuclear threats. As part of the deal, Washington has agreed to periodically deploy U.S. nuclear-armed submarines to South Korea and involve Seoul in its nuclear planning operations. In return, South Korea has agreed to not develop its own nuclear weapons. It is also understood agreement will strengthen the Allies' cooperation in deterring a North Korean attack. Concerns has been rising on both sides about the nuclear threat posed by North Korea. Pyongyang is developing tactical nuclear weapons that can target South Korea and refining long-range weapons that can reach the U.S. mainland. The U.S. already has a treaty obligation to defend South Korea and has previously pledged to use nuclear weapons if necessary. But some in South Korea were starting to doubt that commitment and call for the country to pursue its own nuclear program. South Korean President Yoon sik yeol who was at the White House for a state visit, said the Washington Declaration marked an unprecedented commitment by the U.S. to enhance defense, deter attacks, and protect U.S. allies by using nuclear weapons. China, clearly not pleased with the U.S. stance, warned against deliberately stirring up tensions, provoking confrontation, and playing up threats. The new agreement is a result of negotiations that took place over the course of several months, according to a senior military administration official. Now, under the new deal, the U.S. will make its defense commitments more visible by sending a nuclear-armed submarine to South Korea for the first time in 40 years, along with other strategic assets, including nuclear-capable bombers. The two sides will also develop a nuclear consultative group to discuss nuclear planning issues. President Joseph Biden's decision to seek re-election as President of America has been a major talking point in global circles ever since he announced his bid on Tuesday. The president, now aged 80, asked voters to give him more time 
to finish this job and extend the runoff for America's oldest president for another four years. Biden, who would be 86 at the end of a second term, is betting his first term legislative achievements and more than 50 years of experience in Washington, which will count for the increasing questions around his age. Many believe he faces a smooth path to winning his party's nomination with no serious democratic challenges. But he's still set for a hard-fought struggle to retain the presidency in a bitterly divided nation. He spent his first two years as president combating the coronavirus pandemic and pushing through major bills such as the bipartisan infrastructure package and legislation to promote high-tech manufacturing and climate measures. Meanwhile, his predecessor at the Oval Office, Donald Trump, is facing rape charges brought against him by journalist and author Elizabeth Caro over an alleged incident nearly 30 years ago. Ms. Caro has testified she launched the case to try and get her life back. Elizabeth Jean Caro told the New York Civil Service rather, that the rape and defamation trial had been unable to have a romantic life since the alleged assault. Ms. Caro claims Mr. Trump accosted her in a Manhattan department in, in a store in 1996. He has denied the charges and consistently referred to her accusations as fiction. Now, in order for us to talk about this, I have a global affairs analyst who will be joining us virtually, Paul Ejima, to talk about these issues. Paul, good afternoon and welcome to VOP Television World News. Thank you for having me, Esther. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, the story is never an easy one when Trump is involved. Why isn't the matter already statue barred after nearly 30 years? Well, Trump is um, uh, somebody who has um, made a name for himself. I uh, remember he used to be in show business and then um, now he's um, a politician. He's wealthy. So and he commands um, and he tells uh, his um, base, um, you know, fan base or supporters what um, they want to hear. Uh, so that is why he's still hanging around in spite of the, um, um, you know, the, um, what is it called? The, the baggage that he brings, the legal, um, uh, you know, the trial and all that. Not just the rape, uh, alleged rape, there might be others in financial um, um, allegations of impropriety. But this is somebody who, um, in spite of losing in 2020, uh, for which he, he, he um, you know, uh, he's uh, accused of uh, um, inciting violence. Uh, remember the, the um, invasion of, um, of the Capitol here. He had more. Okay, more than 70 uh, million um, uh, Americans voting for him. And um, there's also, you know, heavy weight in the Republicans. Um, so he might likely get the, the tickets and then to face um, a Biden if um, the, the Democrats also um, um, put him forward. You have talked about uh, Biden's uh, age, but remember, there's not much between them. Biden is 80 now and Trump is um, uh, 76. So is uh, Americans are moving towards the geriatrics um, uh, politics leadership, but the thing about the the, 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 the American system and some other um, advanced uh, democracies is that it is institutions that work. You don't need to, um, you know, it's not about personality. Of course, you, you as a leader, you can uh, galvanize. Uh, those who will work for you, but um, it is institutions, if you have strong institutions, strong institutions and not strong um, personalities, it will work. All right, but looking at what is going on, obviously Trump is looking to run for president himself. Can he stay to come back and possibly unseat Joe Biden with the case already building against him, you know, the, the, the rape case already ongoing in court against him? Do you think that he has a strong chance to unseat Joe Biden? He, with his um, never say die spirit, um, and given the fact that I, I mentioned here now that there are many people who still support him, it's likely if he doesn't defeat um, a Biden um, uh, uh, candidate, he will also give them um, a run for their money. I can't see the point that would be the, uh, the uh, Republicans that they don't have anybody that is as strong as uh, Trump. Uh, in spite of um, his um, 
you know, whatever uh, confusion and chaos that he brings to politics, he is still um, of um, uh, political value. Uh, some will say that is a liability, but um, given the fact that um, he commands a, a lot of uh, respect in the Republicans, and remember, uh, over there, Unlike what we have in, de in uh, developing countries like Nigeria, where uh, politicians move uh, so easily from one party to the other, there is, um, you know, a principle. If you were born, your father was born a Republican, you may remain a Republican almost for life. Uh, ditto for, um, uh, 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 you know, Democrats. So it is um, going, it will be interesting to see how everything pans out, how he manages to wriggle out of the legal um, entanglement. And um, if um, now that Biden has uh, declared, it's likely that, that Biden will get a democratic ticket. How, whether Trump will get it for the um, you know, Republicans remains to be seen. All right, thank you so much, Paul Lijman, for coming on the World News on VOP TV. I do appreciate your input. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Now, still on the Trump case, we still have uh, Deya Misaka, who is also a global affairs analyst. And, of course, we also need to ask more questions concerning Trump running for the front race, as well as Joe Biden declaring his intention to run in 2024. Deya Misaka, good afternoon and welcome to VOP Television. Hello, Deya Misaka, can you hear me? Can you hear me, Demi? Good afternoon. Okay, it seems... Good right. afternoon, Esther. It's nice oh, to be good here. good afternoon. Okay. So, apparently, uh, Joe, Joe Biden... Chris, has, I'm yeah, with you. I okay, can hear you. All right. Joe Biden has declared to run a second <laughs> term. And uh, this time around, questions have been asked as to his frailty. Donald Trump, you know, gave a press conference when he was addressing his supporters... And he said, how can Americans look up to someone who basically cannot talk? He looks frail, possibly acting out sometimes. And uh, the, the, the Americans, he feels that Joe Biden has sold the right of the Americans. He also made statements as to walls that were erected against some international menaces. It's basically what that was his phrase. Some international menaces have been brought down. And uh, there, are, there are a lot of illegal individuals in the United States of America. The United States of America no longer has the rancor or the power that it used to have under Joe Biden's uh, administration. What do you think is your take on it, considering the fact that the person talking himself has a case in court against him? Well, I, I probably want to say this. Joe Biden is... Um, I, I've, I've read a lot of things about Joe Biden. I followed Joe Biden even when he got into the Senate as a senator representative Delaware. Yeah, and he, he was on he was on the committee on um, security and national intelligence as far as 1976. So American policies, American foreign policies, American security architecture, and the governance is not strength to Biden. This is not a campaigning for Joe Biden. I'm just probably going to try to reel out his credentials and what he brings to the table. What I would like you to know, there's a way that it catches up with you as an individual. If you can prove to the American people that this is no issue and you have survived it, fantastic. But I, I was a bit disappointed, thrown off, but because I felt Joe Biden was just a candidate to get the presidency away from Donald Trump and probably push, push forward. But it's not the case. It's still Joe Biden saying he wants to go all the way for the next four years. Anything can still happen. He could probably get into office because he might think it might just be the. It might, you can never tell politics is, is it's a game. It might just be let me just stand this election, run this race, get a ticket, get the presidency, resign, and give it to Kamala Harris. You don't know what, if that's the plan in the offing, because I don't see Kamala Harris going against the Republican and winning the elections because of. The, the the narratives and you know the thematic pillars the republicans have built their campaigns in the last two elections that featured donald trump i think it's just a survivor for the democratic Party. democrat that's why we're having this this conversation about joe biden okay contesting um, okay so um there is also the situation where some americans feel that regardless of the cases against uh, former president donald trump that he has a lot of supporters. 
despite the rape charges against him and a couple of charges too, you know, from the, the government of the United States against him, he has a very strong chance. There are supporters who feel that with a president, former President Trump, that there are quite a number of regulations that will be put in place to put the U.S. back on track. The United States has been having energy problems, including debt situations. They feel that under the administration of Joe Biden, the Americans have done a lot of lending than receiving. They also feel that in terms of their treasury, there's a deterioration. Although the House has more of the Democrats, but it seems the Republicans have a strong hold to when it comes to decision making and there's a possibility it may pull through. Do you think if former President Donald Trump puts his hat in the ring that there's a strong tendency he'll be a strong contender for President Joe Biden? I, I, don't, I don't know what people are saying. I don't know what um, people are banging on. But I can tell that um, what America, and this is Americans across the board, Democrats and Republicans, they are doing everything possible to stop Donald Trump. For Donald for Republicans, if they don't stop Donald Trump, Donald Trump is going to be bigger. And also, as we speak, he's bigger than the Republican. I probably might just send the Republican into political oblivion. So that is why it's a concerted effort to stop Donald Trump. If Donald Trump puts his hat into the ring, he's going to get the presidency because whether we like it or not, irrespective of the coloration, irrespective of the, uh, the, the media hype or media campaigns and what have you, Donald Trump represents the true American values. The true American values over time, which, which it was, whether we like it or not, was built on slavery, bigotry, um, oppression, suppression, and that was what it represents. And it uh, also represents the law for cons. You know, the, the NRA will always want to support him. And uh, so, to that Trump, and for America as a country that has built a reputation, and with the global, uh, you know, well, across board, and there are some values that have now been promoted, that have been embraced as the new culture and values of America, and there are cultures and values that have been discarded that should never be embraced, which the Donald Trump presidency will, will further embrace. I think it's a concerted effort that the, to stop him, and Donald Trump will never even get to all this. I don't talk of training into the ring. All right, dear Misaka, thank you so much on coming on the World News on Voice of the People TV. I do appreciate your input. You're welcome. So moving on, Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan has cancelled a number of planned public appearances after developing an illness thought to be a stomach bug. In a statement, he said that Vice President Fuat Okte would take over a number of his speaking engagements. The president was set on Wednesday to make three appearances in the central Anatolian provinces just weeks ahead of elections that could potentially see him and his Justice and Development Party lose power for the first time since 2002. Hours after the initial statement, another AKP Vice President, Erkan Kandemir, said that Erdogan had also cancelled his program for Thursday when he had been due to inaugurate Turkey's first nuclear power station at Akuyu on the country's southern coast. Erdogan appeared to suddenly become unwell during an interview to Turkey on Turkish Channel TV. The broadcast, which began 90 minutes behind schedule, was cut off in the middle of a question 10 minutes into the show. Erdogan returned after about 15 minutes later to apologize for getting sick, but the show ended a few minutes later. Police at the coast have arrested renowned controversial televangelist Izika Odero and closed down his mega church in Mavweni, Kilifi County. Coast Regional Coordinator Roda Onyacha, who briefed the press at the Uhuru Nakaza building in Nairobi following the arrest on Thursday, said the pastor will be questioned by detectives at the coast police headquarters in Mombasa. In a statement on the matter, Interior Cabinet Secretary Kuthiri Kindiki said Mr. Odero was being processed for charges related to the killing of his followers. He added that at least 100 people found at the televangelist premises would help police with the probe. Mr. Odero's arrest comes in the wake of mass death at an expensive land allegedly owned by court leader Paul McKinsey. 
whose church is based in Shakadola village in Kalifi. It also comes as Kenya's policing authorities came under tough criticism for alleged negligence over court activities that have so far claimed more than 90 lives in Shakahola village. MPs this week said Inspector General of Police Jafet Kome, Director of Criminal Investigations Amin Mohammed, and National Intelligence Service Director General Philip Kameru should explain to Kenyans how the crimes believed to have gone on for quite some time went undetected for long. Ms. Onyache, who is also the Regional Security Committee chairperson, said Pastor Ezekiel's arrest was not connected with the McKinsey saga. Pastor Ezekiel, who was accompanied by his lawyer, Jared Magelu, was clad in his signature white robe and his Bible, which he carries wherever he goes. Pope Francis took unprecedented decisions on Wednesday for a pivotal bishops' meeting for the first time, giving women the right to vote. The pontiff approved modifications to the norms governing the Synod of Bishops, a Vatican body that gathers the world's bishops together for periodic meetings. Changes also include allowing the participation of 70 non-bishop members, half of them women, at the Synod set for October 10. They too will have a vote. Ever since the Second Vatican Council, the 1960s meeting that modernized the church, popes have invited bishops from all around the world to Rome for a few weeks at a time to discuss specific issues. At the end of the meetings, the bishops vote on particular proposals and put them to the pope, who then prepares a document paying regard to their ideas. Catholic women's groups have long criticized the church for relegating women to a secondary role. The praise of Pope's changes are steps in the right direction. And that is a wrap on the world news right here on VOP TV. My name is Esther Wachuku. To subscribe to our YouTube channel at Voice of the People TV on our social media handles at VOP TV Live. Good afternoon and thank you for listening.